Hello. Hi, L'Oreal. Hi, Jill. Hi. I'm having, let me turn my volume up. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe mine is down. Well, I also have a very loud air conditioning unit on right now. <laughs> oh, your AC, you said. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn it off in a minute. I understand. Are you in, uh, where are you based out of? So I'm in New Jersey and it's 90 degrees here with like 100% humidity. I mean, you would think I was in Miami. It's awful. <laughs> Right. Oh my gosh. Get out. Okay. You are hotter. Where I'm in um, Southern California. Yeah. Oh, and like in San Diego or? Yeah. I live in San Diego. Yeah. Oh, awesome. My dad's in San Marcos. Let me tell you, Jill. I am <laughs> in San Marcos. Are you in San Marcos? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to visit my dad now so I can come see you. <laughs> yes, there you go. Come over. We'll cook out in the backyard and have some wine and some edibles. And oh yeah. my God, I'd love yeah. that. This I love, I'm so glad you, I love San Marcos. You know, I have a, a, a history with San Diego because my dad started a veterinarian practice in um, La Jolla mm -hmm. and then he had a place in Del Mar. And I used, oh, and that's when I started betting on horses because of Del Mar. Oh, right? yes. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and so, and then we, and then we would go to Laguna Beach as well. So like we fell in love with San Diego and then my dad moved up to um, Woodland Hill, like, uh, you know, Hollywood. Yeah. Um, and, um, and thankfully when he retired, I was so happy when he said, I'm going back down to San Diego. And I was like, good, because I'd rather visit you there than in Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood or Woodland Hills. Yeah, I went to high school at Woodland Hills. That's funny. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, hang on one second. Sorry. Okay. I just thought I was about to host a webinar and um but hi Jessica. Give me just one second. I can't hear you. Maybe hi guys. Hey. Hey, Lobby Jean. Um, you know what? I have to meet with somebody really fast. Um, can I have like a few minutes? Um, get something to drink, check your sound, check your internet connection all that kind of stuff. We're not gonna start until five, which is two o'clock your time. Um, and I'll I'll be back in a couple of minutes and um, I'll walk you through like how it's gonna go. But right now, just do what you want. <laughs> okay. And I and we're waiting for um, her, Kristen. Hi. Enjoy. Okay. I had to unmute. Yes. Hello. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Jill. Oh. oh, two beautiful women. I love this. This is great. Hi, girls. Hey, L'Oreal, I love your top, by the way. And your background's amazing. What a smart idea. Thank oh, you. Thank you. You know what? I can't take the credit. My husband put this for me. So, yes. Yeah. My husband's the tech one as well. Yeah. At least, yeah. at least we're good for something, girls. You know. <laughs> We've screwed up this country so bad. I'm talking about the old white man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that guy. Yeah. Speaking my language, Jimmy. Oh, you're going to like my news. Trust me. I always take shots at politicians and our <laughs> current system right now. It is so screwed up. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. Where you go? Where are you from? Gloria, you go for Oh, um, I'm from Los Angeles. Yeah. I've heard I'm of Los Angeles. That's in California, right? Yeah, yeah. And currently I live in San Diego. So yeah. Do you know do you know a journalist named Jackie Bryant? I think she's the canna bitch. <laughs> that name sounds very familiar. Like I either did an interview with her or someone on my team did an interview with, with her. Yeah, after I'm done, I'm talking with her at 5.15 because I've been looking for a California correspondent and she did a story on lobster. 
And that happens to be my favorite food. Oh, yeah. And it was an interesting story. Uh, what it had to do with cannabis is there was someone in Southwest Harbor, Maine, who is getting lobsters high before she puts them in the pot. To I know. Down to it's actually wait, what's her? Funny. There's like five cannabis bitches. <laughs> That's right. <you're> all... <laughs> if I know why she's the one. Did I just see Christina Di Giovanni? Did she just make a little? Hey, she made a little cameo I... there. There she is. Hi, beautiful. How are you? You got you're on mute. How's it going? Oh, How's it's it? going. How are you doing? Uh, just uh, never ending advertising sales, my favorite part of the job. Oh my God. You know what? I wish you would sell for me. I, I hate doing it too. I really do. And uh, man, I brought on six sales reps this year and um, I think yep. two of them have hung around. So those are actually <laughs> really good odds. Um, although it's what I'm doing now. So I know it's how I'm doing it too. And it's, it's just the, the struggle is good. The good news is Miss Christina and I, and, um, who else do we have here? Is it Jessica? Yeah. And uh, Laurel? Is it Laurel? Yeah. Laurel? I, I, you know, the, the monitor's on that side. I'm looking at the camera. We've had over 100,000 views of our videos over the last three months and wow. 50,000 50, in the last 30 days. So people are starting to watch our news and we're live streaming 24 seven now on our website because we're taking our Roku channel and embedding it on our website. Nice. So we have made tremendous, our story has improved. Let's just say. Nice. I'm sure with those numbers, the ads are flying in. Oh, flying. It's like, I can't keep up with them. They're all over the place. You know, it's incredible. It's like Thank uh, God for the ones I have, you know, cause I have a lot of people who believe in what we're doing and, uh, They've uh, they've been supporting me and all that neat stuff. But um, you know, I'm glad you go. I'm glad you are back because we have been playing a lot of the Emerald webinars in our 12 hour programming loop that we do every week. Nice. So, well, here's one more for the library. Yeah. No, I'm 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 happy. And 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 Jill must be a glutton for punishment because she's back in the uh, director's chair. I noticed. <laughs> Jill's holding strong. She's holding That's the webinars cool. strong. Next That's week. I mean, not that, uh, not next week, but in two weeks, I'm planning an in-person event. I don't know if you'll be in New York, but you're more than welcome to come. What what date is it? Um, I'm thinking, let's see, I just solidified the location yesterday. Um, I'm thinking maybe like the 24th, which is a Thursday. So um, yeah, that's about it. Just yeah, try, just try I'm to not going to be there. I'm just going to tell you because I, we're the next day is our last show for two weeks. So mm -hmm. that week will be our last. We're, we're taking a couple of weeks off because I'm burnt out, to be perfectly honest with you. Oh, and um, yeah. I, need, I need to recharge for a week. So um, not that entrepreneurs really ever stop working, right, Christina? Never. Even in my sleep, I'm, I'm doing business. So wake up very tired a lot of the mornings. I don't need to, I don't need to know what you do in your sleep. Okay, that's fine. All right. I'm selling, I'm selling those ads, Jimmy, in my sleep. <laughs> selling those ads. <laughs> cool. Well, I think you'll like my uh, I think you'll like my news report today too. It's uh, a couple of interesting stories happening out there in the world. Hey, nice. do you know about civilized? Uh, the media outlet? Yeah, I thought they sold or they were acquired or something like that. And that <laughs> fell through. And now they've relaunched as Live Civilized. And I'm just trying to get a handle on them. I just try to connect. Uh, or I'm, I'm reaching out to their CEO. Um, because they were properly capitalized and they totally over projected what they thought they'd be able to reach as far as an audience goes right out of the gate and really too bad but we'll, we'll, knew, we'll see what happens i knew one of their investors um back in 2019 whether he sold his shares or not i, I haven't talked to him in a long time but um are you trying to form like a media partnership with them or something you know me i want to i want to be partners with the world okay so 
you know, <laughs> I mean, that's just what I like to do. And uh, especially with like-minded people. Now, the question is, can you find like-minded people who are good people like Christina Di Giovanni? That's a rarity, okay? You're too kind. Too yeah. Kind. But um, I definitely will be coming down to New Jersey at some point this summer. And I definitely will track you down before I get to that neck of the woods. Well, you'll have to go visit Jill in her new shop in Maple. Well, that, actually, I'm giving her a plug because I've seen the pictures. I'm getting, I've seen the pictures. And it does look, her shop looks really cute. The outdoor there. Women very have such a, such a great decorating taste thing, you know? It's a very know. cute little shop of hers. I was out there a few weeks ago, so. Cool. Worth well, the I trip. think Maplewood is about, I think, 45 minutes away from uh, Mawa and, and Wayne, but I will definitely take the trip when I get down there. Yeah, my family is in Paramus, and I got cousins in Mawa, so. Oh, you do. Oh, oh you I, do. I do. I have a cousin deep in finance in Mawa. <laughs> So. He, does, he, he or she doesn't live in Rio Vista, do they? They live in the most stereotypical, gaudy mansion in Mawa. In like, Rio, I guarantee it's the same neighborhood my brother lives in. <laughs> so literally, like we went out there for Christmas a few years ago, and I was like, like, like the the Sopranos. I wouldn't consider to have lived in a mansion, but if you could like times that house by four, that is like my cousin's house. And so I was like, wow, like I feel like we're in the mafia. We're Italian, seemed appropriate. And he is like, um, well, it's funny you mentioned that because there is the Russian mafia in the neighborhood. And I guess like months before Christmas, um, their house was robbed. Wow. And, and they put like a warning out there to the robber. And the next day, all of the belongings ended up on the front lawn. So they were returned immediately upon intimidation. Um, wow. so the neighborhood's no joke. No, 12,000 square foot house, Christina. I, I don't seven, even know. What seven, bedrooms, seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, three kitchens. That includes an outdoor one. I'm sure, it's in the, I'm sure they're neighbors. This I was right going to say, it sounds like that neighborhood, doesn't it? Yeah, because I think they've got two kitchens, around like five bedrooms, maybe like six bathrooms. They have a whole apartment in the basement. I mean, right. bigger than my apartment here in Brooklyn. Right. You know? Oh no, please, it's, it, it's ridiculous. And uh, by the way, he's single. I'm just saying, and he's trying to sell his house for four point five million. But he managed to buy another condo, rented that because he couldn't sell his own house, so he's staying in his house for the time being. Gotcha. And what yeah. does he do? He's in finance he's a, as well? He's a re, he's a, so first of all, he's a retired uh, oil trader. Oh, geez. So he sold his soul to the devil is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I, I will tell you, he got a, get this, he got a um, um, full academic scholarship in 1976 to MIT. Mm. The guy's brilliant. He really is. And he supports a small nation. We call it Jerry World. Lovely. Well, okay. Jimmy, it sounds like you need to be investing in your pro-cannabis media. I have invested. <laughs> yeah, Would you yeah. like to see the sweat equity I put into this place? And my <laughs> retirement savings, I might add. Yeah. He's a majority shareholder, to say the least. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> And we just we just added a new network talent to our roster, and um, Dave Briggs interviewed Calvin Johnson. He's an NFL Hall of Famer. Uh oh, my prompter just went down. All right, hang on. Sorry, I have to do this. All right, oh, oh, Christina. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's nice to meet you in virtual hey. real life. I know, right? Right. <laughs> Uh, it seems like you and Jimmy go way back. How long have you known him? Or I mean, I, I don't even remember where we met. Must have been at a convention or something. Oh, oh you know what? That's not true. He, we met through a mutual acquaintance named Roger. Uh, That's right. And um, I mean, so we've known each other for what? Going on three years now? Two, two years. years. Going on 2020, right? 
No, 2019. Um, we met in real life. Yes, um, we did. And then Jimmy and I can just shoot the shit at any time. I've tried to make the roster for his show, but my broadcast journalism skills are not up to par, so I never make the cut. Oh. Huh? What do you got to say about that, Jimmy? What do you got to say? <laughs> what do you got to say? I, I got to say that we have to work together a little bit more. That's all. Because you Thank do you. have, you have, you, Christina, you absolutely could do this. It's, it's far more, it's up here more than anything else. Once you relax, if you would talk to the camera like you talk to us now, we'd be all set. Well, I do. But when I have to memorize lines, it's a little Don't harder. memorize. You know your stuff. You know your stuff. Yeah. Just talk to the camera like it's your best friend. <laughs> or maybe if I took you up on that consulting offer to polish my journalism skills, I would make the cut. Interesting pay to play dynamic you've got going on, Jim. <laughs> hey, we need a New York state correspondent. You know, we have Deborah Borchardt covering Wall Street, but we still need a New York state correspondent. And I'd be happy to work with you on that. Well, I'm always here. And speaking of Deborah, um, she just did an article yesterday that gave us a little shout out. I was very pleasantly surprised. She's so. really nice. She's great. Yeah, she's Perfect. really nice, nice people. And uh, I'm glad she's on board with us too. We're, we're going to be developing something we call Canacasters, Christina and, uh, and everyone else, uh, basically teaching on camera talent. We're looking for correspondents in California and Oregon and Washington and Colorado and Nevada, because we are going to build out this cannabis coast to coast um, show. And you just want someone in each state to report on that state's cannabis news? Yes. I mean, run it by me. It doesn't take much to record myself for 60 seconds. You know, Christine, I tell you what, I tell you what, tell um, me. Tell me. Tell let's, me. let's set a date. It won't be tomorrow, but let's do it before next Thursday, like Monday or Tuesday. That just tell sounds, me. sounds good to me. Maybe. I'll find it. Find me an hour, find me an hour and we'll go over it. And uh, and then we'll take it from there because it's really it's gonna be like the sixth or seventh time we've done this. <laughs> no, no, no. This time I really am gonna I'm gonna walk you through it and put a store put it together with you, and that's really the best way to do it. It's like, hi, I'm Christina D. Giovanni for We Talk News, and in New York this week they're hiring new commissioners. They're looking for licensees. Uh, some idiot put a, you know a ton. What's that? Oh, there's Jill. Hi, Jill. Hi. You could say purely if they're looking for a creative director. Is that... I think they're looking for a marketing person too. J Jason White left. Oh, really? I think yeah. that I was just on their website because I was trying to solicit them for advertising. And uh, I took a peep over at their careers because if they are looking for a marketing person, might as well just hire us. Um, <laughs> but I didn't see anything for marketing. I just saw it for a creative director. Um, and it's pretty tough. I got to say, this person needs to be coming from um, right. the top of the line. Top of the line. Like, even yeah. I didn't make the cut. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, the guy we hired, Dave Briggs, actually has a contract with them to blog for them or, or do something for them. So Lucky uh, guy. He got in. It's so hard to penetrate those. You guys, I think all the females on this, you'll like Dave Briggs. Trust me. 42-year-old um, network quality looks, voice, personality. Um, he's the whole package. I could say he's about a 21 year version of younger version of me, but that would be stretching it. <laughs> he's 25 year version. <laughs> all right, all right. <coughs> all right. Um, okay, so sorry for my absence. Um, did did anyone walk through kind of how it's gonna the timeline of things or we haven't gotten there yet you go jill you're in charge <laughs> you're so cute jessica <laughs> um and we're still waiting for Kristen. um i hope she's not having any issues where's my phone um hang on i will pack a bowl what is she doing I think she said pack a bowl. I did think she said that, right? <laughs> I did say that. 
I I'm on the clock, it. off the clock. Okay? I tried um, to refrain from smoking during the work day, mm. which I went to Mexico a few months ago and didn't have any access to cannabis. And when I came back, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna work, I'm not gonna smoke before I'm officially off for the day. I consider this to be a little bit lax, but um, so far so good, it's working out. <laughs> Oh crap, I can't find my phone. This is not good. There's a very heated comment debate going on in um, our Instagram right now. Over so what? Like, well, we post something, uh, the influence of cannabis in Israel and Palestine. So we'll just, and then we, all we did was just talk about the history of it. Um, and like the earliest representation of cannabis, you know, back in 630 BC, um, and clearly, you know, this is a sensitive subject, but um, I keep getting these notifications and I'm not even like opening them, but I'm seeing these guys like, it's your opinion and you're chewing on. And it's like, okay, like the conversation has graduated from the history to queuing on to. That's not, that, that's. Don't you hate when that happens when you have intentions of it going one way and you're like, this wasn't the reason. Uh, it just takes one person to say one word and then and then a whole another conversation sparks off from that um and yeah there was one time i remember a long time ago like this one argument was going back and forth for like more than a day between these two commenters and I'm, even i was getting tired of like looking at it i was like all right that's a no-win conflict right there that's just it's just so sad um, Christina, can I ask you for a favor? Can you reach out to Zoe and, and find out where Kristen is? Okay. Please. Zoe Wilder. Um, All right, so um, in eight minutes, I'm gonna open the room. Um, and then I'm just gonna wait like about a minute to for people to join in. And then I'm gonna do opening remarks. And then Jimmy's gonna do his little two minute news segment. And then I'll come back in and introduce you, Jessica. And then you'll take it from there and you can introduce L'Oreal and Kristen or have them introduce themselves, however you wanna do it. And um, and then you'll, you'll take it from there with the panel discussion. Um, as far as Q&A, like I'm gonna direct people to put their questions in the tab at the bottom. It's up to you um, if you wanna answer um, throughout the discussion or wait till the end. Like you can kind of, I mean, every every webinar is, handles it differently. So whatever you're comfortable with. And I'll be here to help guide you or jump in if, if you need help with anything. And um, um, we, we end it. Six, so it's an hour. Um, we usually usually end right on time, to be honest. Um, and so it's like you know, thirty minutes panel, and then fifteen minutes of Q and A. Sometimes that changes a little bit. We don't have a lot of questions, um, and that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Am I tossing to Christina, Jill, or back to you? What? At the end of the at the end of my little two minute news, am I tossing it? throwing it yes to back to me to back me. to jill yes jill back to jill not gotcha. to christina to jill <laughs> back to jill i actually have it i actually have it both in there so i'll make sure okay it's jill. cool um and all right so um i just text her and i sent her a message on instagram all right, you got a few Thank minutes. Thank you. I'm going to try to email Kristen too right now.
L'Oreal, we got this. Don't worry, okay? <laughs> okay, I just let me know when you want me to give my spiel and all that. So I'll just be here quiet. <laughs> Oh, and Jessica, I gotten the questions from Zoe. Were those the same ones? Are you going to stick to that? Oh, I figure I could just riff off of that. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to have you introduce yourself, obviously. Um, I'm going to go with the questions. And I also want to bring up what you've been doing lately with um, the Urban Hip Tech Foundation. I think that would be really awesome to share a little bit about that in the future oh. with the events and all that too. So that's just... My, my idea, if there's anything else you want to bring up, obviously, just let me know. But, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the plan for me, at least. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, and if it's just us, we will just talk about motherhood. Mm -hmm. I know, I was gonna say like, I wish I could jump in there, but I don't have any kids, so I have no experience. I have a dog. Lots That's, to do That is responsibility too, though. <laughs> I had a dog before I had a kid and I was like, oh, I don't know if I wanna have kids. This is kind of a lot. Crap, <laughs> if the dog lives, you should be good, um, you know. Toughest job ever. She's waiting on the link, Jill. Um, okay, I'll, I'll I, I sent it at three o'clock today, but I'll resend it. Okay. And Tell her to scroll down because it's like the flyer first, and maybe that kind of confused her. Okay. She just didn't miss. Maybe she missed it. Uh, all right. I'll also just text this to Zoe. Um, having it here. Okay, I just resent it to Kristen. And I just texted to Zoe, so. There she is. Here's our girl. Yeah, hi, Kristen. <laughs> Maybe her audio is not connected. Can you hear us okay? Uh, is there a chat? Kristen, can you turn your audio on for a second? Or is your mic on? I can't hear her. Can anyone else hear? Um, can't, um, all right. It doesn't say that you're muted, but we can't hear you. She's, she's got to tell her computer that the audio is computer audio. It's a setting as you enter the room. Um, what he said. Yeah. And that's a good, that's good information to know, Jimmy. Can you She's got that? to enable her computer microphone, the internal microphone on her computer, and then also the audio, the internal built-in speakers if she's using a laptop, it looks like she is. I've had a little experience doing this Zoom thing over the last year and a half. So Jill, after I'm done speaking, do I turn it back over to you or should I hand it off to someone else? Um, hi, how are you? Um, uh, are when are you that? speaking? Because <laughs> I was, because we remember we spoke earlier and I was going to introduce Jessica because that's usually what, what you, when you speak. Sorry, hang on a second. All right, that's fine. But, but if you want to change it around, it's fine. No, I'll, just, I'll just hand it back to you. It's easier that way. Or do you want to do opening remarks? I mean, I was just going to say thank you for joining us. Um, okay. All right. Um, all right. Hang on one second. I'm sorry. I can't come back. I told nobody oh, you were doing this today. Oh, I just want to see this thing. Did you see my Oh, <laughs> good morning. Uh, I've never connected. Is there something you need to Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. okay. Right. Weird. I just had to leave and come back. Hello. 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 Which tiramisu or the. Oh, tiramisu. 
Take it and just come back and pay me another time. No. What's what's the about gummy bears? Uh, the um, oh, CBD yeah. chocolate. Regular CBD. This is the best part of Zoom calls. Okay. You can listen in and other okay. people's conversations. Yeah. They don't even realize we're listening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And it makes like, some excuse for you to come back. That's right. Hi, <laughs> CD. Sorry, guys. I'm in, a, I'm in my shot. I have to lock my door. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is talk about, okay, this is like perfect for this panel because there's, there's an, an example of a one woman show. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. <laughs> I don't know how women do it. Um. So how do cannabis? I... Oh. <laughs> Good one. No, the yeah. answer actually is because you have to. As okay. a, I'm talking about being a mom, right? And a, yeah. And a, and a breadwinner, and a partner, yes. right? And a friend, oh and a, whatever else responsibilities you want to throw in there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's five o'clock. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Emerald Live. So excited for you to be here. Um, I'm Jill Conan. I am the Managing Director of Emerald Live, the webinar division of, of Emerald Media Group. And I'm also the founder of the Cannabis Lady. Um, before we get started, I'd like to thank some of our partners. Um, Supernova, Last Prisoner Project, Oh, Canna Cannabis Media, The Cannabis Lady, Garden State Normal, Petty New Jersey, Tokativity, Women Empowered in Cannabis, Zoe Wilder PR, and the Center of Asian Pacific American Women. So a few of those um, non-for-profits um, I've been donating to. So they've been um, sharing uh, information about the webinar and, um, and, and about my shop. Um, so thank you very much for your support and um, your promotions. We really appreciate it. Um, now for a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I encourage everyone to network in the chat room. So please, you know, feel free to drop in your LinkedIn link um, or uh, your, I, your handles, your Instagram handle or any social media handle, and please be sure to follow us as well. Um, for questions, we will answer questions throughout the panel, um, and you can put your question in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Today we are discussing Emerge Panamoms. Um, motherhood is a challenge no matter how you slice it. After a pandemic and the cannabis plant becoming more um, regulated and um, more promoted and a little and less stigmatization. Um, everybody's been turning to cannabis for help with anxiety and insomnia and pain and all of that. And, um, and so th we've emerged into a lot of these uh, canna, canna moms have emerged into new cannabis businesses and um, have had to juggle um, dealing with a pandemic and being a mom and being a business owner. Um, so we are going to talk about today the challenges and the journey of that. And um, I'd like to just quickly share my own story for a second because I opened um, a shop in February in the dead of winter uh, in the middle of a pandemic when we didn't know we were opening up. And I'm a mother of a 12 year old. And um, so this is what I do. I, uh, when I have to go to the post office, I put this sign out, went to the post office, we'll be right back. Or I take my daughter to soccer practice and I say, be back in 15 minutes because I'm a one woman show over here. And what else am I gonna do? And you know, it's, it's kind of funny. Everyone loves it when I put this out on my door because they, they really, they, they're a mom too, usually. And they get it and they, uh, and they either wait for the door till I come back or they go and get a coffee and come back and they tell me, oh, I saw your sign. And so it's cute. I love it. It's fun, fun community. Um, so I, before I introduce our lovely moderator, I'd like to turn it over to Jimmy Young, founder of Pro Cannabis Media for a little two minute clip on latest industry news. Jimmy? Hey, thank you so much, Jill. And by the way, your CBD store looks great. I can't wait to visit in Maplewood when I'm back down in New Jersey. Hi, everybody. I'm Jimmy Young from Pro Cannabis Media. And this is a quick wrap up of cannabis news over the past month or so. 
But before I get into that, have you gone onto our website and entered your own cannabis story? That's right. Come out of the cannabis closet on text or video, and you could win a great state-of-the-art storage device called Your Story. We're giving out one of these. Oh, wait, I'm going to hold it up every month for the next four months. Check it out and tell us your cannabis story to win with your story. Dot com. All right, now it's on to the news. Now it looks like Connecticut will become the next New England state to legalize adult use of cannabis. The Senate there passed the bill, and with the Governor Ned Lamont's approval, it heads to the Connecticut House, where leaders there are confident they have enough votes to pass it before the week is out. Now, there are some rumblings that some House Republicans there want to slow down that process, but Democrats there still think they could push it over the finish line. Now, if that happens, Connecticut will become the 18th state to legalize the sale, use, and possession of cannabis for adults. On the federal front, the Safe Banking Act and the Moore Act have moved past the House of Representatives. And of course, they've gone nowhere in the Senate where all progressive bills go to die. That's thanks to our filibuster clause where the Republicans seem to do whatever they can to just piss off the Democrats. It's all politics and my gender and race continue to screw up this country in both parties. Now, what's going on in Colorado, you ask? You know, that was the first state in the union to legalize adult use of cannabis for recreational purposes. Well, now that state legislature wants tougher packaging requirements on concentrates and tighten up the rules for under 21 adults to obtain a medical card. Yes, that means 18 to 20 year olds can get med cards. The bill also wants to buy a buying limit to eight grams per day. Now, this is the same state where the governor just increased the possession limit to two ounces instead of the one that had been on the books for years. Massachusetts-based MSO Cureleaf has entered into a strategic partnership with Rolling Stone magazine. Cureleaf's select brand will do just that with Rolling Stone's help. That media company will select brands to co-market. There are also pre-rolls and a pod system that carry the co-brand. There'll be a lot more visibility for these co-branded products because both Cureleaf and Rolling Stone will be announcing a first-of-its-kind retail space in Las Vegas in 2022. Now, remember, Nevada is looking to license social cafes as soon as the legislature there can figure out how to do that safely. Hey, bong hits on the strip, only in Vegas, unless, of course, you're in Washington State. You see, the politicians there are always looking for creative ways to share their progressive ideals for a higher purpose. Now in Washington state, their liquor and cannabis board announced that they are offering joints for jabs. So from now until July 12th, if you get yourself vaccinated against COVID-19, you can walk off with a free pre-roll, of course, to the plus 21 crowd. Not to be outdone, the alcohol group is offering a free drink for your shot. And wouldn't that be shots for shots? Just saying. It's a whole new world of weed out there for the Emerald Media Group. I'm Jimmy Young from Pro Cannabis Media, now streaming 24-7 on our website and our Roku channel, PCM TV. Back to you, Joe. Great. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, now a word from Christina DiGiovanni, our CEO of the Emerald Media Group. Hi, Christina. Hi, Jill. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you so much to our panelists and our moderators. And thank you for joining us this afternoon on the topic of parenthood, motherhood, you know, sisterhood, using cannabis to cope. Uh, I am not a parent myself, but I can appreciate all the work that went into raising me. And I'm sure that my parents, even though they may not confess it, probably had some cannabis right at their side. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it back over, but thank you all for joining us. And thank you for everyone for being a part of this movement. Thanks, Christina. Now I'd love to introduce our lovely moderator, Jessica Gonzalez. She's the founder of the Mommy Jane. Love that name. Um, a wellness page on Instagram dedicated to normalizing plant medicine for mothers and helping women find their voice and advocacy. She recently wrote a guide on how to mindfully grow your personal brand on social media. I, I think I'm gonna need your help, Jessica. <laughs> um, uh, and 
produced by, I love Tokativity. Tokativity has my heart. Um, so that's been pr produced on Tokativity, which is slated to be released summer of 2021. You can catch Jessica on various platforms showing cannabis education, including Green Bee Life and High Curious, and get to know her life a bit more through her blog via themommyjane.com. Jessica? Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you, Jill and Christina and everyone attending today. I am Jessica Gonzalez. I run the Mommy Jane on Instagram. Those of you that don't know me, that was my bio. I am an advocate, a writer, a speaker, and entrepreneur, for lack of better words. And so are the women that I am interviewing today. I am so excited to share uh, the mic with two moms, two incredible moms that have worked extremely hard in this industry to get where they are today. And I can't wait to dive in to what they've been up to for the past 15, 16 plus months and how we have been surviving the, the pandemic and simultaneously still growing our cannabis uh, brand and company. So without further ado, let me get started by introducing um, L'Oreal. And if you'd like to share a little bit about yourself, we can uh, go on from there. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, Jessica. I am excited to be a part of the panel. Thanks, Jill, for having me and Christina and Jimmy. Um, my name is L'Oreal Allegretti and I'm the CEO of 40 Tons brand. We're a social impact cannabis brand that's dedicated to freeing prisoners that have been locked up over unjust weed laws, nonviolent cannabis charges. And um, I, just a little backstory for myself, um, my husband had to go away and serve time for unjust weed laws and it left our family devastated. Um, and it left me to pick up the pieces. And I knew that that was an unjust thing that had happened to my family. And so I represent the wives and the mothers and the girlfriends and the daughters that are left behind when their loved ones have to go and to um, serve time over an unjust weed uh, charge. So um, this is why I started 40 Tons and um, you know, uh, why I continue to, to fight for the, the prisoners that are currently in jail. And just currently there's over 40,000 that are incarcerated as of 2018. So the fight continues and um, you know, we are uh, doing everything that we can to help those prisoners through the sale of our merchandise, you know, through collaborations with other cannabis brands, you know, we've got a flower, we've got a gummy and we've got our merchandise. So um, a lot of the proceeds do go right back to that prisoner for, you know, their commissary and books and glasses and whatever else that they may need. So that's what 40 Tons does. That's incredible. I love that you found a very niche that we just really don't consider. You know, if we're doing our best to get everybody out of jail. However, in the meantime, how can you also make their quality of life better? And I think that that is just, it's just, it's the energy of cannabis right there. You know, it's just, that's how cannabis makes us feel. You know, it gives us that quality of life. You are embodying the plant when you are giving that sort of normalcy and that sort of love and attention that these people deserve, because we all know that are in this room that they don't deserve to be there. We all know, you know, why they are there. And it's so important that, uh, you know, there are, people like L'Oreal that are providing those services until we are able to change the way the world sees cannabis. So right. thank you so much for sharing that intro. Kristen Mersloat of Alpine Stash, Alpine Stash, excuse me. I tried to, okay. this, I told myself all the time I was not gonna say it and then I go and say it. That's because <laughs> I said it too much. <laughs> Alpine Stash, so thank you so much for being here. Why don't you introduce yourself and you can take it from there. Hi everyone, um, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here and to meet everyone and speak with everyone. Um, I am the co-owner of Alpenstash with my husband. We're a small craft cannabis grow, um, wholesale grow. So uh, we're really, we really focus on plant health and growing sustainably and uh, putting out a really healthy craft product for, for our customers. And I'm also a mom, first and foremost. That is, that's a, that's a job itself. Everybody, those of you that are moms that are in the audience today, that itself is a full-time job. This is why cannabis helps. And this is, you know, why we are coming together today to talk about it. So 
Um, you know, just to, in the pattern of just going back and forth, L'Oreal, why don't you uh, answer this first question? What are your, the biggest challenges you faced as a mother in cannabis? Okay, um, I'm a mother of three. Um, the challenges I face would be that work-life balance, right? And then the stigma that's around of how are you able to really juggle it all and, and um, consume cannabis and stay focused and, you know, like you're taking drugs, how are you supposed to be on the PTA, right, at your kid's school? Or how are you supposed to be a coach for the cheerleader, cheer, cheerleading team, whatever that is, right? So just letting people know that it's okay, you know, um, I can function, you know, I usually do like a micro dose for myself. Um, so I have that stigma around me. And then um, another challenge would be um, my oldest son, he's diagnosed with Tourette syndrome. And so we've been through a gamut of all sorts of medications, very expensive, you know, um, they don't work, they don't work long term. And um, it had a very bad, he had a very bad reaction to them. So we had to turn to uh, cannabis use. So I'm a huge advocate for that. Um, it's a, a lot cheaper and it's actually working and it continues to work and he's able to function and be, you know, uh, uh, have some normalcy in his life. So that, that's the challenge, but we're working through it. I appreciate you as a mother who also is an advocate for their children. I think that's a huge step in advocacy. You know, it's one thing for us to advocate for our bodies, but to also be able to advocate for our children is, is I mean, it's the highest form of motherhood, really, being our advocates for our children so we can change the trajectory of health and wellness so that they can live empowered lives and be able to use the information and make their own decisions and decide if plant medicine is something that's for them. So I commend you so much. That is not an easy um, card to be dealt and for you to like listen to your higher self and 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 follow through and just really live the life. I'm I'm it's it's really incredible. So thank you so much. What about you, Kristen? What are the biggest challenges that you have faced as a mother in cannabis? I feel like she really touched on the two main ones, which is, you know, being a businesswoman um, in general and being a mother, that balance is extremely, extremely hard. And it comes with a lot of guilt and a lot of being torn, you know, feeling, feeling like sometimes I'm not working hard enough or sometimes I'm not spending enough time with my son. Um, I'm a mother of one right now, Earthside. I'm also pregnant currently, so we will have two soon. So very exciting. Um, a COVID baby. I feel like there's a lot of them <laughs> coming out. There's going to be a boom. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's going to be a lot of children yeah, in a few months. It's a good stress reliever. Um, but um, <laughs> I, uh, we'll, we'll save the hacks for later. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but I, um, I think the other big, the biggest thing for me is, um, yeah, the stigma. It was, is really difficult. Um, you know, on both sides, kind of where, yes, there's a negative, you know, stigma attached to it. Um, we're being a mom and consuming. And then also on the other side, where a lot of people just assume I consume all the time. You, you know, or that I'm just like, so I feel like there's, it's a finding the balance and kind of educating people and also showing them that there's different, there's different types of consumption and there's different levels, I guess, you know, I, I mean, so I used to consume daily. Sometimes I don't, I kind of go through phases, um, you know, but just that assumption that like, oh, here, I, my friends call me Mur, but my mom friends like, here comes Mur, she's going to get really stoned or make sure you smoke outside. And it's like, I, okay, it's not necessary. You know, I'm not commenting on your wine drinking <laughs> or your whatever right. you choose to do, you know? Um, so I think it's just a social, socially, it's been the hardest. I've actually been really lucky as far as um, people in the cannabis industry accepting me. Um, obviously as a woman, you always have more hurdles, but I think that's just a part of life actually, unfortunately. So in the cannabis space, um, I've been really fortunate as far as that's concerned. I'm really impressed, seriously, because I mean, for you to be able to have, this is the perfect example. We have mom brain, we have pregnancy brain, we have freaking cannabis brain. 
it, it, I mean, just the humaning as an adult, like I feel like our, my brain cells are just as the years go on, like flowing away from me. So I'm so impressed with you to be able to still not only, you know, function your, your, end, your, your end of the industry, but also to be able to parent because you're still parenting while you're pregnant. Like people have to realize that that's, that's its own thing because the kid starts to realize like, I'm not going to be the only one and, you know, things change and et cetera. And I'm so glad that you also brought up the point about um, like all the moms are like, are, are you high right now? Are you high right now around my kids? Like, listen, lady, I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm, I'm good. I know what I'm doing. I know how much to take before I leave the house. Well, how much time I need to spend before I get in the car. I've got it down. Trust me. Don't you worry your head, girl. Don't you worry. Also, I'm not asking you what you're doing. Like, yeah. worry you about you, sis. Pram today. Who's going to say that to people? Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine? Oh, my God. Oh yeah. yeah. So thank you for mentioning that. I think that's something that like, I don't know if we really even discuss it enough, even as advocates, really how much like black we get from the, from the, from the uneducated mothers that are really thinking that we're just completely loaded all day long. There is no way with the frequency of this industry that any of us in this room would be able to keep up if it really was a hindrance. You know what I mean? Like we are the most productive people because as uh, L'Oreal was saying earlier, I have to take drugs and get my work done. So it's like, we really are scientists, you know, to some extent trying to formulate what's going to work best for our bodies. And, you know, that's part of the journey itself. So speaking of actually, what was your biggest takeaway from this pandemic? And what are you looking forward to most now that things are opening back up again? So L'Oreal, can I start with you? Yeah. Um... The biggest takeaway I'd say for myself is um, the technology. Like we're all forced to do the, you know, some form of chat, a, a Zoom, a, a Google Meet, a Duo, a FaceTime, uh, right? Um, in the pandemic and um, building those relationships via the computer, you know, that has been uh, a takeaway that it could be done because normally you know someone would walk into your office or you'd say we'll meet at the local starbucks whatever and you would conduct your little meeting there but now you know or in the pandemic you you were not allowed to do that you were not allowed to do a handshake you know those deals did not happen during the pandemic so um things like that um a, a big takeaway that business still was able to carry on collaborations still were able to be formed without that human touch yeah that's so spectacular i never really considered that but that's a really i mean when you're making those connections the half the half the battle is that personality do do we match can we function together is this the right fit so for us to have to gauge that through a screen is extremely difficult. We just tacked on another skill set that we didn't even realize that we had, you know? And I think also, and those of you in the audience are probably gonna agree with me and comment, please. We'd love to hear what your th thoughts are on this, but cannabis keeps us in touch to that higher self so that we have that intuition. So we have that foresight. We may not always listen when we hear the little <laughs> warning signs or see those red flags, but the intuition is usually there. And it's usually the first one to tell us this is a good deal or maybe you should wait a second you know and i really love that you brought that up because it's really made me more discerning and it's given us that 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 as they say pregnant pause you know that one pregnant pause where you're just like do i need to do this right now like we just got handed this whole new shift and i can i can just start over with a clean slate so how do i want to write this out for the rest of us now how do i want to write this out moving forward i i, I love that you brought that up so Chris, would you like to share your biggest takeaways from the pandemic and what you're looking forward to most? Uh, yes, I have learned that stay-at-home mothers are superheroes because when you don't get to leave and go to work, um, I mean, I felt there were times where I was so overwhelmed with the amount of work I had to get done. And my son is going to be two, so he's a toddler. And then taking care of my son while, you know, just doing a hundred things at one time. I just, there were so many times I just wished I could just go into the office that I could just leave. You know, we really had to rework our, um, our schedules, my husband and I, because our business is so small. There's only four people total, including the two of us. So when, you know, when COVID happened, it was really like, all right, let's kind of reevaluate, you know, what we're doing. And 
I ended up taking a lot of the administrative work so I could do it at home while I was with my son. And there were days where I just was like, ah! <laughs> you know, so I just, I really learned that moms who stay home all the time are just like, hats off to you ladies. Cause I would much rather go in and work. That is for me personally, much easier. And for that, thank God for can cannabis, because there were days that yes. I needed to just like, you know, put my son in the pack and play for a minute with some Mickey Mouse Playhouse and just go outside for like two minutes and like take a little hit and just a deep breath and re like reevaluate everything and then be like, okay, you know, put my fighting gloves back on and get back to it. But I think that was one of my biggest takeaways. And the other thing was how important a support system is. I think that was a really big one, um, both on the, my, the business side, we were so blessed to have a team that we could really count on where if we could not get in, I really knew that, you know, our plants were well taken care of, um, regulations were being followed, the facility was staying clean. I was just, we, our team is just a phenomenal team. I would even call them a family. Um, and how important it is to communicate with that support system and work together, really. You know, my husband and I, on a good day, are apart for two hours, and you add the pandemic in on that, and it was just like, you know, some days. So, wearing all the different hats of business partners, husband and wife, mother and father. Um, so, I, that support system really came in clutch, I think, for us and a team. Oh my gosh. Yes. It, it takes a village. It takes a village to raise a cannabis business also. It does, it's not just the family. Like we all need each other. This plant is connecting for a reason. Women need each other now more than ever too. We've been, what was the statistics? Like 56% of women had to leave the workforce last year or something crazy like that. I read in the New York times, like it is, it is what it is. We are, we're still fighting that patriarchy. And it's just in, in, in insane how much we were really given. And, and, and especially the ones that also didn't get a chance to stop working, like us in the cannabis industry. Like our work accelerated. Everyone's like, oh, I'm binge watching Lion or Tiger King. I'm like, must be fucking nice. <laughs> I, I have not had a break in so long. I'm like losing my damn mind. So yeah, I, I, had, a, I had a very altered experience. I'm sure and some of you can relate than most have experienced in the pandemic. Like now that it's vacation time, I, we just recently went to Disney and I was like, oh my God, I feel like I had just emerged on a new planet for the first time because it's like there, it was like one thing after another. Then we had, you know, Women's History Month and 420 and Mother's Day. It's just like, we haven't had a chance. It's never stopped for the cannabis industry you know and for mothers etc and for parents out there that have, have had to share the workload and how do you keep that fair you know i'm so grateful my husband is supportive but it's also really difficult because a lot of it falls on me since he is the primary breadwinner you know like i don't make enough to, to compensate for what he does at this point yet i know it's still growing and it's new so he does his share he'll do dishes every once in a while but when it comes down to it if he has the business stuff to do and so someone needs to make dinner it's gonna be me you know, I, I, it's just the, the, the hierarchy of, of our of our home, but that I also understand that as well. And so for me to not have that resentment and for me to know that like, okay, this is my role and I'm taking it on and this is for the greater good of the family. You know, we have to have that moment to ourselves where we realize like it's an ego death, you know, really. We like have to like let our ego die a little bit and realize that it's not about us. It's about the greater good of the family. How do we keep the businesses going? Because in some cases, you know, as especially both of you actually more than one business going to some extent. So it's just how to keep the businesses alive, how to keep the morale high. Because you don't, you know, the kids are around you too. They see the energy in the house. They, they see that sort of thing. And so I really think that it's uh, great that you mentioned um, th the team. Um, and I, I, I know that you faced obstacles beyond that. So what kept you motivated aside from the team and gave you that drive to keep you going as a con as an entrepreneur in the cannabis space? And, you know, let's change it up. Kristen, you can just segue. Um, I mean, the welfare of my family, to be honest, I mean, this is how we make our, our money, you know, and it's also something we really believe in. So I think that it was was pretty amazing that we were deemed essential, right? I mean, that was like, that was a huge deal. I mean, that was a huge deal on so many levels. And so when 
all of a sudden cannabis is an essential business and people need us. It's like, thank, thank you. Fin finally, people are starting to open their eyes and they're starting to see that it's needed and it's so helpful. And it like, it does so much for so many people. So we just wanted to, as a brand and as a business, keep making and growing the best product we could to just reinforce that. Um, and then again, as a small business, that's hard on a good day. And so, you know, we, we're just motivated for our family for, um, and for the, for the movement itself, you know, and I think because of, because of the stigma that's kind of, it's still there, obviously hard, but I think a lot of people are opening their eyes more to it. And um, I started a mom's group um, with some local moms here. And I think I'm one of like five can of moms or I was. And so then I would start, I would make events on that, on that um, platform and say like, Hey, do, who are there any other moms who smoke? Like there's happy hour. We have zoom happy hours, but let's have zoom smokes, you know, let's have, let's all get together. And maybe one person would show up, but that's fine. That's one woman who was afraid to smoke before. So I think those little things also keep me going as far as in the can of mom space or that like instant message, like direct message I get at 2 a.m. when the mom's like, oh my God, I'm so high and I this really funny thing happened and I couldn't say anything to anyone else or because they're still in the can of closet. I like those little things I think mean a lot to me because it's, you know, you're a safe space for them and you're someone that they can reach out to where you can say to them like, it's okay. Like it's, it's okay. And you know, when you're ready, I'm here and I will like help lift you up and we will together smoke a joint and show everyone <laughs> for lack of better, you know? Right. I love that you said that. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I think this is a great opportunity for those of you that are a little shy. This is a great way to get into the industry, get your feet wet and decide if this is something that is for you. Go to the virtual events while they're still happening. I, I have a feeling we're not going to stop. I mean, I feel like it's turned a whole new leaf and the virtual events are going to be simultaneously going with, with the other ones. And so get your, get your feet out there, you know, and, 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 share the the ideas and stories with other women having these conversations where it doesn't even have to be about cannabis just talk about whatever the heck you want but have that moment and that break with other moms i think that's that is essential is getting other moms to open up getting other moms to take a break and you know for them to realize that there's other forms of self-care beyond just cannabis so you can actually you know we all love smoking alone but it's really freaking fun to get high with friends you know oh, so yeah. I, yeah, I love that you created that sort of mental health opportunity for us because I, I mean, I'm, you guys have seen me struggle recently. I'm, I'm having a really hard year. It's really been this like heavy energy. And as an empath, I've been feeling it so freaking hard and I can't seem to shake it. And so having those moments and having panels like these where I have that, the opportunity to share and connect with other women, other cannabis women, especially because it's a really unique industry. Not everyone's going to get it. I totally understand that. Like you were saying, there's still a stigma attached to it, um, you know, but it's just really important for us to also uh, create these spaces, you know, because no one else will. It's not, people do not think about the moms always. We were like the last person, we get one day out of the year and then the rest of it, it goes back to everybody else. So carve these moments out even after the pandemic because mental health is always gonna be a priority regardless of what we're facing uh, in our life, you know? So I, I, I commend you for doing that. That's so special that you did that. Um, L'Oreal, would you like to share, um, you know, something that kept you motivated and gave you drive as an entrepreneur in the cannabis space during the pandemic? Yeah, during the pandemic, what kept me going um, is knowing that there's so many uh, mothers out there that are without their children, you know, like serving this crazy amount of time behind the behind cannabis, and that you know their children are left behind. Because um, I, you know, I was in their shoes, just opposite. You know, I was with with the children and having to be mom and dad, and and uh, when my husband was away, and um, and there's just so much work that still has to be done. Um, so yeah. And until the 40,000 prisoners are free, I, I've got to continue uh, working and, and uh, amplifying my message and hopefully collaborating with others to help me with that message and, and spreading it. And, and so we're all aware and on the same page and want to make uh, a difference and make a change. Yeah. I think that's 
fantastic. I'm so grateful for women like you. And those of you that are, you know, trying to find your path, there's so many, so many outlets. You can absolutely use advocacy out of the path into the cannabis industry. Please reach out to, you know, uh, Last Prisoner Project and, you know, 40 Tons as well and, and, and see how you can help provide uh, any sort of service to them. These are more nonprofits for the most part. And, you know, when they do get the profits, they're going to all the right places. So please, if you have the extra free time while you are at home and you want to get your foot, like I said, in the door of the cannabis space, this is a wonderful way to, you know, put your time and energy into something that's going to be so fulfilling. And I've heard this is, I mean, I've been doing volunteering on a local level, but I've heard uh, it helps with morale and on like depression when you're giving back to community. It kind of like really just, it, we don't realize how much it really fulfills our soul and our service as humans. Everybody's always like asking the question, like, why are we here? What are humans? Why are we here? My kids always ask me that, mom, what are we doing here? I'm like, serve humans. We're here to serve everyone. So find a reason to serve and do it. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's right, Jessica. And, you know, 40 Tons is uh, very soon we'll have our nonprofit sector of the company. Um, so we'll be able to, to dedicate those funds 100 percent to, you know, those prisoners. But right now, you know, it's through our merchandise and our flower and things like that and other collaborations that we are, um, you know, that others can help support us. So, yeah. So those of you that are watching, if you're in California, you can get the you know physical stuff. But for those of you that aren't in those in our state, uh, you can do merch. Merch is absolutely something that can cross the border. You can share your support and you know put the, put your money where your mouth is. I guess right. <laughs> Everybody's always talking about they want to support the cannabis industry. Listen, this is how you support the cannabis industry. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, then... L'Oreal, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have a question is specifically for you, um, you know, social equity and helping disadvantaged families negatively impacted by the war on drugs has been in the, in, been the foundation for your business. So what type of funding, if any, was available to you while you were building your business? Oh, okay. So, you know, initially my husband and I and uh, Corvain, um, we are, this is our core team. Um, we bootstrapped this business, you know, uh, initially, and then we got um, our first investment from a um, an attorney. Her name is Brittany K. Barnett. Uh, she's an amazing individual, author, um, attorney, advocate. Um, she is with the Buried Alive Project. So she believed in our story and our cause and what we were trying to do, and that resonated with her. So she, you know, so investments like hers and um, other cultivators who also helped us as well locally in the Los Angeles area. I don't know if you want me to tell you the names or how. Yeah, no, I'm just curious what the journey is like because I know, you know, when it comes to these social equity products, everybody's, you know, promised all this money and it, and when it comes down to it, what like four percent or two percent is getting the money for it. So. I'm just curious, like as, you know, as a woman, as a woman of color, as a mother in this industry, like all those, you know, things that we have, the baggage we carry when we're going into these, these rooms to ask for money, you know, and, and, and why, you know, why does it how why does that even have to be baggage? Why can't it just be a human? Oh, it's a human walking through the door. Let's see if their, their project's great and we can give them money, but it's never the case. It's always, you know, the women are the last in the lines for the, for the funds women of color further down the line for that. So I was just curious on the journey because, you know, it, it takes so much. All of you are, you know, you, you criticize these cannabis companies. You don't realize how much blood, sweat and tears goes into these cannabis dreams. And it's not, you know, no one just wakes up one day with a hundred thousand dollars and like, uh, you know, ready to start the cannabis business. Some of them have that privilege. Obviously it's mostly the old white dudes, but for the most part, when you see a lot of cannabis industry, a cannabis businesses like Kristen's, for example, run by a husband and wife, you're you're praying that your family and friends and whomever are going to support you because it's really freaking hard to get that not only just physical but the financial support to be able to make these cannabis dreams come true. So, just something to consider. I'm not trying to like make anybody feel guilty, but we really need to realize like people are putting their blood, sweat, and tears on the lines especially when you see the the women of color in this industry able to succeed that's you know they worked so effing hard to get to where they are not to discredit anybody else but man 
dang, <laughs> that's not an easy journey. It's not an easy journey. And I just wanted to shine some light on you today for, for going through all that. Thank you. Yeah. So investments, other um, growers that have offered us, you know, flower with favorable terms, loans, um, you know, it's, it's all hands on deck. My family doesn't come from money. We're a super, super humble, small family, but they supported me um, with watching the children so that I can go out and uh, hustle up these funds, right? Uh, you know, so that in itself- That's, right? that's <laughs> priceless, <laughs> priceless. Right. <laughs> Right. And you, you all being moms, you know, that struggle is real. You know, you, you've got to go to this event. You've got to go meet this person for a meeting, what, whatever it is. And you meet that three to five hours where someone is going to get your kid from school, pick them up, give them a snack, give them dinner, put them, put, put them in pajamas, whatever it is. Right. And know that they're going to be safe and sound at home while you go and work your business. Like that's prices. Right. So yes, family definitely uh, helped and are super supportive and, um, you know, I, I, I no longer have my mother here, but I do have a great mother-in-law. So my hat's off to her and I married her only son, her only child. So, um, you know, she's helped me uh, tremendously, you know, especially when Anthony was incarcerated. And um, so, yeah, yeah, I do support my father watching the kids again. So yeah, across the board, everyone in my circle has been super supportive. It's so nice to hear the support of families. I know that's not always the case. It was not for me in my journey. Um, I know, Kristen, you are, I mean, you're a family operation, but did you have all the support that from your family or were there some naysayers? Um, yes, I think, you know, when I was really young um, and I actually felt the same way because I grew up um, an, an elite athlete. And so I had my own ideas of what cannabis were, which were so incorrect. But, you know, I was like team like drugs are bad and K, okay, you know, like, which so, so incorrect. Um, but as you know, I suffered a really bad injury playing hockey and cannabis actually helped me get off a ton of drugs, um, painkillers. And so my parents got to watch that process. And so they threw that in itself. Um, they then became pro cannabis because they saw what it could do for me. Um, so my family, very, very supportive. Um, Danny's family, very, my husband, very supportive. His dad was actually on one of the first like lawyer boards in the seventies to try to um, legalize. So he's like super pro cannabis. Um, Danny's mom is like one of our biggest um, supporters and clients. <laughs> she, <laughs> you know, she's, she's constantly like, what do we got this harvest? You know? So one of my like favorite memories is oh yeah when when gail and i as mother first met um we taught we actually just talked about it this weekend it was very awkward because we were both high and neither of us knew we were going to meet each other and so it was like a very 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 awkward and uncomfortable situation that we still laugh about it till this day so we're very we're so fortunate we're so fortunate um you know my mom my mom doesn't really consume. She does now. She, you know, she'll have like a gummy here and there, but, um, my she's, mom, yeah, she's the yeah. Same way. <laughs> you know, she's like, I need to sleep or whatever, but, um, they're very, they're so, they're, they're so supportive. My mom and my dad have always been, you know, my biggest supporters. So I'm, I'm so lucky. I'm so, so lucky because I realize that is not the case for a lot of people. And I'm double lucky that my in-laws are mega supportive as well. So, we are, we're a pretty hardcore cannabis family, I would say. <laughs> I can, yeah, to the core. I love it. Yeah. I love yeah. it so much. Oh my gosh. I, I, I think this is awesome. Um, okay. So I know we're getting to that point. I have like two more questions. You, they can be, you know, as brief or as long as you want. Those of you that are still on here, if you want to ask any questions, now would be the time to put that into the chat so that we can go back to it and answer those questions as they, as they come through. But in the meantime, I will ask the the next question, which is, do you feel like you've received more no's entering the cannabis industry as a woman in cannabis, or has this industry been favorable to your success? And L'Oreal, let's just go with you. Um, I, I don't want to say I've received many no's. I've received um, not right now, if that makes sense, right? 
So, you know, whether they were waiting for their harvest, whether they, the timing wasn't right, whatever it was, it would be like, I want to work with you. I want to do something. I will just have to put it off to another day. So um, that's where we've been, but still very blessed to have um, the relationships that we do have with some great brands out there, some very known brands out there. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, very, very blessed in, in that, in that aspect, I would say. That's awesome. Christy, would you like to share? Have you had your share of no's or do you think because you've been this, you know, couple that's kind of charming and endearing that people are like, oh my God, this is awesome. Let's support you. Thank you. First of all, <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, you know, there's not a lot of women in the cultivation space itself. Um, that's a very male dominated area. And so unfortunately I get, have gotten a lot of like, if Danny's right here, I've gotten a lot of like, just talking to Danny and kind of, you know, I'm just like the chick in the room, you know? So that's, um, that's been really difficult. Uh, I still get it, but, um, I'm not a meek human. So it's usually, and my husband appreciates that about me and is like also a hardcore feminist. So my husband's always constantly redirecting it towards me when those people are like that to, and specifically not answering questions. So that's extremely helpful. Um, but I get, I do get a lot of that. You know, there's a lot of, for lack of better term, grow bros in, in my, my area. Um, and the, one of the first podcasts I ever did, a gentleman asked me, he's pretty high up too. Uh, what it was like to be a woman um, in the cannabis space and interrupted me halfway through to explain to me what it was like when he didn't like my answer. Um, so it's it's been a lot. Of, <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. That's some serious um, mansplaining right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's that's that's generally been my experience. Um, sometimes, you know, when I work with we work with a lot of couples, a lot of couples come to us, which we love. And so that's my favorite because then it's obviously a man and a woman and a man who's supporting a woman and knows that she's not an idiot um, and will speak to me as they speak to Danny. But if it's just a person I'm calling a lot of times, sometimes they won't contact me or they'll call Danny back or an email is just to Danny. You know, um, that's, that's, that happens often and it's really frustrating. I'm not gonna lie. Very frustrating. It's disheartening. It's disheartening to feel like you're not credible enough or whatever. And it's like, I don't, I hate the idea of having to prove myself to people. Like that is the most exhausting thing as a mother, as a woman, as a woman in cannabis. Like I'm constantly like, I mean, not that I'm looking for validation, but it's like, we have to fucking prove ourselves left and right. Like, yes, I'm a good worker. Yes. Cannabis works. Yes. I'm not a lazy stoner. It's like, all these things that I'm, um, yes, and on top of it, I am a good mom and surprisingly a good wife. And, you know, all these things, it's like, it, it's so shocking. It's so like, oh my God, she, she got this it's done. So She's tiring. successful. Like, it's so tiring. Yes, it's like, it I'm is. fucking tired. <laughs> Sometimes there just isn't enough cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yes, anyway. Oh my gosh. Well, okay. We have one more question. It doesn't look like there's any questions from the audience so far, which is totally fine. Wait, L'Oreal, did I give you a chance to answer that? That yeah. one question? Um, oh, the no knows. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. And then, excuse me, it's, you know, we're getting, we're reaching the hour. So, you know, <laughs> got it. The happy hours so on top of it. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Okay, this is such a great one. This is literally like, this is obviously what I live for. That's why I had to include it in this uh, questionnaire, but any advice to moms who are interested in starting a career in cannabis? You just mentioned, um, Kristen, that couples come to you. Is this something that you welcome? Are you a consultant for people that are looking to grow in the cannabis space? Like, there you go. Like, let's talk about this. <laughs> yeah, yes. Actually, we have a um, Alpenstash Consulting. Um, it's Alpenstash Consulting at Gmail, and we um, we are on that platform. Uh, I'm also super open just dm me in our uh instagram account at alpenstash and i will talk growing with you if, especially if you are a woman like please the more the better i will go step by step with a plant with you i will help you get equipment i will i mean i if you are a mom or a human 
interested in, uh, especially a woman is like interested in growing, um, even in a closet, one plant, like the more the merrier. I just think it's so good for you. You smoking the plant is amazing, but growing it is also amazing. It's so much, it's like just as important for my anxiety and who I am to actually grow as it is to consume. And so the more, the better. And we need more, we need more women up in here. Like we need more ladies in the cultivation space. So come on. Right. Um, just to touch on yours, Kristen, absolutely. Um, you know, asking for help, people being open like you are to the grow process, you know. Um, so that's great. I love it. And then the other advice for me would be um, to be patient, right? Because um, this does not happen overnight, you know, so that number one, um, be diligent, right? So know what you want to do. Don't veer from it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't let a man come and tell you no, right? Um, and then have your core team and be, uh, you know, um, and supportive people around you because that's also very important too. So, yeah. Oh, I love the support part. I, I, cannot express that enough because I worked so hard to reestablish a friendship base once I lost a lot of friends by joining the cannabis industry. It was like trying to filter through humans again. It's like, okay, who's not going to judge me? Who could possibly be great collaboration for a project? You know, all these certain things. And like, it's so hard to like find that discernment and not feel like you're going to get taken advantage of for your niceness and all these little things. So to find the right people to support you is magnanimous i mean you are literally unstoppable at that point because you know that you can go to your your friends or colleagues or whomever you want to associate how you want to associate it with an idea and they'll say you know yes or no yes or no for instance i have a, I, I finally have a team myself it is the best because i like i dim myself and my team is the one who's like you need to add more color to that you need to brighten this color i don't think like that because i'm just like oh i'm just this mom who doesn't know what she's doing he's like no be the bright light that you want to be and shine onto everybody and we need to all start to do that we are all light we all have the ability to shine we are mothers we shine our love onto our kids every single day and we can take that energy and we can shine into our communities <laughs> excuse me shine into this industry as well and then shine back to the mothers just like kristen was saying with the with the groups and all these things that we can start to create these little pockets of uh, compassion and pockets of support and pockets of you know just sort of masterminding really for lack of better words masterminding is so important these days we've all experienced something we all have something that we can share with one another and it's so important that we we stop like hiding behind our computers and start sharing our secrets and sharing what works with us i really think that that's important too so i cannot express the freaking group thing enough. Kristen, you want to piggyback off that? Yes. I just want to say something really fast. I think you touched on something so important as women. I think we are taught to dim ourselves, to speak in whispers and to like hide and like, you know, and I think this industry is a such an amazing opportunity for us to say, no, you, you set the fuck down. I've got this. You know, I think it's such, such an amazing opportunity for us to like support each other. I mean, every time I do these panels, a tokativity, when I reach out to women, no one's mean, like no one's judgmental. Everyone's just so excited that more women are joining. And so if you are scared, just reach out to one person, just say, hey, you know, maybe I want to do this. And, you know, I guarantee you that person's going to open their arms and be like, yes, 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 and probably overwhelm you because they're so excited that they're like, you could do this and you could do this, or maybe I'll help you with this or I'll contact with this, or here's this person, you know, like, it's just because we just like, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but we just, you know, we just need to keep bringing each other up and more women in this industry. We can like, I really think that we have the ability to not take over because I'm an interpersonal feminist. I believe we're equal. I don't think we're better. I don't want to like stomp on men, but the assholes I do, but not all, all men, you know, but I think that we have a real opportunity here to stand beside them and in front of them instead of behind them. Yeah, you know? there's, there's plenty of room at this table for all of us, you know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. I love that you said this. It's so important. If there's anything else you want to add, L'Oreal, please go for it. I, oh wait, Katri Saunders. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. We need to share our stories more. Please 
share your stories. That's my last thing I'm going to say, share your stories, share what's working, share, share, share and support. And this is always going to be relevant until it's not anymore. We are going to have to keep saying women supporting women, women empowering women until it's already obvious and it's happening and it's not cliche. It's just part of the movement. Okay. I'm done. Yes. Because then, you know, and the, other thing, the other thing that's true as well is that we get, we have two receptor sites in our bodies because we have the brain and we have the female reproductive system. So come on, cannabis, like it's all about the women and the women should take over. It should, it, it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be the, a men's, another man's business. So, I mean, I have to say like all the customers that come into my shop, when I, you know, and a lot of them come in for endometriosis or, you know, vaginal dryness or, you know, or, or you know, or they're Period having cramps. With their kids, the anxiety with their kids. And, um, and it, it's, you know, it just, it proves like how important it is for the women's health. And they're usually the ones that decide the health care for their family as well. So it just makes sense for us women to own this industry for once. Let us own an industry. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, ladies. This was just an amazing panel. Um, I'm going to be reaching out to all of you because I need some consulting. I need some social media. I need to go see you, L'Oreal, in San Marcos when I visit my father. Right. My father lives in San Marcos. You guys didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and um, this was just so thought-provoking and wonderful, and I appreciate your time. Um, also, Kristen, I want to talk to you about carrying some of your products in my shop. Um, oh, okay. So um, we'll do that offline. And um, so this basically concludes the event. Amazing. And um, I, I don't know when our next event is, because we're going into summer, and I think everyone's traveling, because now that now that the world's starting to open up, everyone's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> right, right. Yes, of course. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we may not, our next one may not be till September, but that's fine. Um, so let's all stay in touch. Yes. Love you all. Hugs and tokes. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Have a so great fun. evening. <laughs> so fun. Thank you. Bye.